Welcome to class number five, session number two. This session will focus on the synthesis of quantum dots. The essential elements for the synthesis of quantum dots involve combining an appropriate metallic or organometallic precursor, such as zinc, cadmium, or mercury species, with a corresponding chalcogen precursor, such as sulfur, selenium, or tellurium species, in a coordinating solvent at high temperature. The solvent have to be stable at high temperature and have to act as a surfactant molecules for stabilization of the quantum dot surface to prevent particle aggregation. Specifically, trioctyl phosphenoxide, which is abbreviated usually as TOPO, is commonly used due to its high boiling point and due to its high stability to coordinate both metal and chalcogen elements. Frequently, TOPO is used as a combination with other surfactants or co-solvents such as trioctyl phosphine, which abbreviated usually TOP, T-O-P, hexadecylamine, or stearic acid. Under these conditions, particle nucleation take place rapidly, followed by epitaxial growth and nanocrystal appealing at slightly lower temperature. During the growth period, the quantum dot size can be monitored using a spectroscopic probe within the reaction flask or by examining fractions taken at various intervals. Once the desired size has been obtained, growth is quenched by lowering the temperature of the reaction mixture. In this case, the growth rate and maximum particle size values can be manipulated to a certain extent by controlling one or combination of the following parameters. The first parameter is the initial precursor concentration. The second parameter is the growth temperature. And the third parameter is the length of the growth period. It is also possible to introduce additional precursor material into the reaction visual during the growth period in order to obtain larger quantum dots and in order to improve the size distribution. Although the reactions carried out to produce the quantum dots must be performed under an inert atmosphere due to their, of course, reactivity or mainly the reactivity of the precursor species with the oxygen, the quantum dots themselves are stable in air. Therefore, post-synthesis manipulation can be carried out in air, making the quantum dots relatively easy to work with. For many applications that involve quantum dots, there is a need for core and shell geometry, namely nanocrystal that is uniformly involved or enveloped by a layer of another material, which is usually reproduces the symmetry of the inner core. The combination of the core and shell often exhibit distinct behavior as compared to that inherent to the individual components such as tunable optical properties depending on the specific combination of course. Current shell nanocrystals can form when the materials involved have similar crystal structure and lattice parameters so that the overall structure experiences negligible strain as long as the coating thickness is small enough. The presented schematic on the screen show a sketch of mechanisms leading to the formation of core and shell nanocrystals. Panels A and C show direct heterogeneous nucleation and growth of the shell material onto performed nanocrystal seeds with controlled shape and crystal structure. Panel D shows sequential heterogeneous nucleation and growth steps into performed seeds that involve deposition of an amorphous shell 
and its conversion to crystalline upon cation exchange. Panel E shows silica sh shell growth by priming of the seed surface and subsequent polymerization. In this case, a number of procedures that involve an intermediate priming step have been devised to encapsulate nanocrystals of a variety of materials. Panel F on the screen shows a sacrificial redox replacement of the outer seed layer. In this regard, many transition metal nanocrystals are potentially useful substances to investigate. This is because they are easily oxidized when exposed to air or solvated oxygen species or other oxidizing reagents, which in turn lead to the formation of metal oxide shell at their surfaces. Panel G shows a surface-confined redox reaction followed by hollowing by uh, the Kirkendall effect. In this case, sophisticated yolk shell nanocrystals have been obtained throughout a mechanism similar to the so-called Kirkendall effect, which relates to an atomic diffusion process that takes place throughout vacancy exchange rather than by direct interchange of the atoms. A net outward transport of a matter from the core stimulates the formation of voids, is seen also on the screen. Under sufficient supply of thermal energy, a huge fraction of the vacancies can ultimately coalesce into a single large void. Now, Panel F shows a self-controlled nucleation growth in which all necessary ingredients for material formation and simultaneously present in the same growing solution. The experimental procedure is simplified since no separate seed preparation is required. Panel I shows thermally driven crystal phase segregation and panel J shows solid state diffusion and coalescence. Starting with the preparation of simple objects like spherical nanoparticles, the field is now moving towards more and more sophisticated structures where the composition, size, shape, and connectivity of multiple parts of a multi-component structure can be tailored in an independent and predictable manner. Few examples are presented on the screen. Another way to produce quantum dots can be achieved by the so-called stransky krastanov growth mode. In this growth mode, isolated islands form spontaneously above a certain critical thickness to relieve the mismatch strain energy. More specifically, self-assembled quantum dots nucleate spontaneously under certain conditions during molecular beam epitaxy, which is abbreviated by MBE, and metal organic vapor phase uh, epitaxy. And this, is ha and this happens when a material is grown on a substance or substrate to which it is not lattice matched. The resulting strain procedures coherently strained islands on top of two-dimensional wetting layer. In this case, the islands can be subsequently buried to form the quantum dot. So far, the fa this fabrication method has potential for applications in quantum, in quantum fabrication and quantum computation. The main limitation of this method are the cost of the fabrication and the lack of control over positioning of the indi individual dots. An example of the self-assembled quantum dot is shown in the present slide. In this example, the presented islands in the AFM image are typically pyramidical to lens shape with a base dimensions of 20 nanometer and a high of 70 nanometer. 
For a closer look on the pyramid-like structure, please have a look on the high-resolution theme image on the left side of the slide. An alternative approach for the formation of the quantum dots is the use of the nano-patterning with the dye block copolymers combined with the selective metal organic chemical vapor deposition. In this approach, the block copolymer lithography process consists of a series of pattern transfers from a dense array of nano-sized holes in dye block copolymer thin film to template mask, allowing the patterned access to the semiconducting substrate during the selective growth. The film thickness is controlled by varying the solution concentration and by the spin speed of the spin coater. Following the deposition of the block copolymer pattern, metal organic chemical vapor deposition is applied. In this process, atoms that one would like to be in the crystal are combined with complex organic gas molecules and passed over a hot semiconductor wafer. The heat breaks up the molecules and deposits the desired atoms on the surface. The deposition of the uh, molecules on the surface are done by a layer by layer. By varying the composition of the gas, one can change the properties of the crystal at an almost atomic scale. It can grow high quality semiconductor layers and the crystal of these layers is perfectly aligned with that of the substrate. In conclusion, nanoscale block copolymer lithography using cylinder forming dye block copolymer following by selective metal organic chemical vapor deposition growth of quantum dots can be used to produce well packed and dense and uniform single crystal quantum dots. This quantum dot fabrication method holds a potential for producing dense and large area quantum dot distribution. Highly regular microdomain structure that is formed by block copolymers was exploited in the creation of templates for nanoscale lithography. The chemical Differences between the blocks constituting the film can be used to create a mask, allowing the block copolymer pattern to be transferred to the underlying substrate throughout the reactive ion etching. This process is applicable to a broad range of substances and substrates, and moreover, the mask or pattern substrate can act as a template for growth of regular arrays of nanodispersed materials. This method can be extended to fabricate metal dots and lines and compound semiconductor quantum dots as shown in the presented figure. As mentioned earlier in this session, quantum dots are usually synthesized from organometallic precursor and are generally protected by a capping layer composed of organic legions such as trioctyl phosphine which called or abbreviated as TOP or are coated with trioctyl phosphine oxide which are abbreviated as TOPO. The resulting capped nanocrystals are hydrophobic and therefore soluble in organic solvents. So far the TOP and TOPO are ligands can be replaced with other capping agents throughout ligand exchange reactions. Alternatively, modifications of the existing ligand using electrostatic hydrophobic interactions or by host gas interactions can be performed. The selection of the ligands that protect the quantum dots depends on the desired application of the quantum dots and the dispersion media. Different methods to stabilize the luminescence properties of the semiconductor quantum dots in aqueous media have been reported in the scientific literature. 
This includes the surface passivation with the protective layers, such as proteins and the coating of the quantum dots with the protecting silicon oxide films, polymer films, etc., etc. An additional method to produce organic or water-soluble quantum dots relies on the exchange of native organic legions linked to the quantum dots, such as trioctyl phosphine oxide, or TOPO, with other ligands. The most common examples of binding groups are thiols, phosphines, and amines. Surface modifications of quantum dots makes them water-soluble and suitable for biological applications such as molecular imaging and medical diagnosis. For example, organic molecules, including derivatives of Markapto molecules, oleomeric legions, phospholipids, dendrimers, and amphiphilic polymers have been all seen and used for surface modifications of quantum dots in the scientific literature. We come now to the end of class number five, session number two. Thank you.